Hey everyone, so today I wanted to demonstrate a complete development workflow from start to finish. And so I'm gonna be showing you an example client request and taking you through how to code it and then taking you through how to allow your client to demo that without setting it live. And then finally, the proper way to integrate that into the main version of the theme. So to be able to complete this tutorial, you're gonna already have to have your theme integrated with GitHub and be using Visual Studio Code to code it. If you have not yet done that, I have a video on my channel for how to do that, which I'll link in the description. And then the other thing that you're gonna also need is the Shopify CLI. And so you can check if you have that by going into a terminal and simply typing the command Shopify version. And if you do have it, you'll see here that it gives you a CLI version. If you don't have that, again, I have a video for how to download that onto your machine, and I will link that in the description as well. Okay, so let's get started coding. So once you're in the folder which houses your theme, you're gonna go ahead and type code dot, and that should open Visual Studio Code into the um, folder that you're interested in touching. And then the other thing I want you guys to go ahead is launch the uh, Shopify theme dev command with the store parameter and use your my Shopify link. So that's going to be whichever link is um, they've changed it, but uh, whichever is here where it says store and then slash or yours might be whatever dot my Shopify.com. So that's the one that you want. So mine is Will Mizbeck. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this command and then wait for it to load. Uh, if anything pops up like this, obviously just allow it. And then go ahead and press any key here. And it will prompt you to log in. I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And now this should run. Okay, so once that runs, you'll see that you can preview your theme locally at 127.0.0.1.9292. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. And so this is prompting me for my store's password. Um, you can find that actually by going to online store preferences. And then on this page, I'm not exactly sure where it is. Here it is. And you can just go ahead and enter this password. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so once that is loaded, you can see that we actually have our store here. And so for the purposes of this tutorial, what I'm gonna say as a really easy starter sort of project is basically the client just wants us to give him the option on these types of image sliders to underline this tag here. So how I would tackle this is I would go into the online store here hit customize and then just take a look at this block and see if there actually is already an underline setting. Uh, there's not here and then also check on this image banner here to see to make sure that nothing here is saying that it's giving us the option to underline this. A lot of times clients will request things that actually are just hidden in certain settings and whatnot. So it's always good to make sure that uh, the theme doesn't actually support the thing that the client is asking for in the first place. So after confirming that there is absolutely no way in the customizer already to set this to be underlined, I'm gonna go ahead and open the inspector in Chrome. And so to do that, you can press Control Shift C or on a Mac, it might be Command Shift C. And then I'm going to click on this and that's gonna tell us what uh, CSS styles are actually already being applied to this. And so you can see here, if we add this here, text decoration underline, it will underline this element. It works locally, but we're trying to do this programmatically and give the client the option in the Shopify customizer to be able to do this on their own. Obviously, we're going to use CSS to do this, and we're going to be using this line of CSS to actually do this. So there's two ways we could go about doing it. We could set it as an inline style programmatically, or we could programmatically add a class here that would have that directive to underline the element. And so if we were gonna go about adding a class, we could add it to either this uh, CSS file here, which is section image banner .css, which you can find in here by going to assets and then going to section image banner .css right here. Or we could add it to the base CSS file, because you can see that both of these are being loaded on this page and affecting this element. I'm gonna go ahead and say that what we actually wanna do is we really want to basically add an underlying class. Before starting any coding, I want you guys to open a terminal here and make sure that you create a new branch for this. And so I'm just gonna name my branch underline. And then I'm gonna get switched to the underlying branch. 
So you can confirm that you're on the underline branch by typing git branch. And you can see that I have this underline here. And then after that, I want you guys to go ahead, go to your assets folder and open this base.css file. Let's go ahead and add at the very bottom of here, we're gonna go ahead and add a dot underline. And we're going to say that it is text decoration underline. And that is just going to basically underline any element that's, that has the underline class that isn't the text decoration property isn't overridden by something else. And obviously I wanna leave a uh, note here and maybe we say like client request 08 26 2024, that's the date today. And um, then I wanna leave one here that says end client request, just so we have sort of a change log here to make sure that we're just making a note that this wasn't included in the original theme. So once I save that, we're now gonna have access to that underlying class on the local served development theme. So let me go ahead and uh, refresh this here and show you that we now have access to that underlying class. So before if we typed underline, it actually would have done nothing. And now here, if we add the underlying class, you're gonna see that now it actually underlines it. So that underlying class is working. Okay, so now what you see is when I refresh the store, the element loses its underline. Uh, that's because it's not actually in the code yet and we're just adding it through uh, the Chrome Dev Tools here. What we want is basically for the client to be able to programmatically add it in here. And so we need to find where in our code this uh, element is generated. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all these classes here and then I'm gonna go into Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna go to the search pane and type this. And you can see that nothing is here. If I go ahead and get rid of the H1, then you can see that there's two places that this is in. It's in the image banner file and then also the slideshow file. I know that we're actually using the image banner because if you remember in the customizer, this thing here is called image banner. So I'm pretty sure that this is the right place. Just to make sure that it's the right place actually, inside this uh, H2 here, so this is when it's a heading, I'm gonna type test and save that. And then we're gonna go ahead and refresh here and you can see that this says test generated test data. And so now we can definitely confirm this is the appropriate element that we're messing with here. So let me get rid of this test. And then obviously what we want here is we're going to want to put in the underline class here. And this is going to always underline the element. We're gonna put some sort of if uh, statement here. I'm just gonna leave it if true for now just as a placeholder, and then I'm gonna put end if here. And so this will still leave it underlined because obviously true is always true, but now we need some sort of um, section.settings thing or block.settings. And I think we should use the block.settings. Uh, the difference is gonna be basically if you use section.settings, it's gonna be up here where you're gonna set it versus the block settings is gonna be inside the block. And so we wanna use the block settings here and maybe we just put it right under heading size. I'm gonna go ahead and search for this in this file, heading size, and see if, so it doesn't have it because this theme is actually multilingual. You can use it in different languages, and to be able to do that, you have to reference it labels like this. So instead of doing that, what I wanna do is I'm gonna to try to find heading size instead. So this here is the appropriate block type. You can see that it's a type heading, here and you can see that that matches up with here. We need to add the setting underneath this setting to basically allow us to either underline or not underline the text. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go type and then what we want here is a checkbox and the next thing that I wanna put in is ID and I'm gonna put um, is underlined here and then what I want is here for the label, I'm going to put is title underlined, question mark. And then here, uh, let me just make the default, one second, this needs to have a comma here, and I will make the default true here, okay? And so now 
you can see that this is still underlined. Let me check that underline. We're going to go back to where we have this if true underline, right? And let me just go ahead and type here block settings and then is underlined. And so this should remain underlined right now because the default was true. But if we go ahead and go back to here where we originally, this was where we originally launched the Shopify theme dev command and we go into the customizer, which is this link here. When we go into this heading, we have this is title underlined. And I'm actually gonna abbreviate that a little bit. Instead of is title underlined, I'm just gonna put underlined. And if I refresh this, you'll notice that that is, that setting, that specific setting is following the coding that we're doing. So now if I uncheck this, you can see that the underline goes away and we can save it. And when we save it, if we refresh the locally hosted version of the theme, you'll see that there's no underline here. So that functionality is now working. Okay, after we've confirmed that the feature is working locally, what I want you guys to do is type git status, and you're gonna see that these files are uncommitted. So I'm gonna add everything by typing git add and then a star. And then if I type status again, you'll see that these files are added. And I'm gonna commit them by saying add underline capability to image banner section title. And then I'm gonna to try to push them. It's gonna complain that there's actually no upstream branch. So to set an upstream branch, I'm going to have to type the command that they suggest here, git push dash dash set upstream origin underline. And that will, after I enter in my password, that will push it to the underlying branch upstream. And so now what we can do is if we go back to the customizer here and we go to add a theme and connect from GitHub, what you'll see is we're able to add this WM shop again but this time instead of adding the main branch, as you probably did if you followed my tutorial for how to connect with GitHub, we're gonna connect this underline branch here. And so once that is hooked up, you will see it populate here. And now you can see if I go into the customizer here for this, that under the heading, we have the underlined or not underlined checkbox here. And so, one of the things that you can do actually is this is what we're up here in the URL. This is what's called a theme ID. And what I can do is if I open up an incognito window, I can actually go to willmizback.myshopify.com and then type a preview theme ID. So that's preview underscore theme underscore ID equals and then type in the preview theme ID, the theme ID here. And this will actually take me directly to that, um, that specific theme. And it'll allow me to demo it. So you'll see once I enter this password, you'll see that we're actually viewing this preview theme. And so this is great if you want to send your clients directly to a preview instead of telling them, okay, go into the customizer and then uh, hit here and then hit preview. You can send this theme directly to their email just using that, again, it's preview theme ID, just like that, and then whatever the preview theme ID was. So the other great thing about doing it with branches this way is suppose the client requests a new edition or, or they want something changed, you can actually just push again back to that same underlying branch. Assuming that the client doesn't want any changes, uh, you just need to merge the branch into the main theme. So that's gonna be a matter of navigating to the repo on GitHub. And then once there, you'll probably see that underline had re recent pushes. We're gonna go ahead and compare and pull request it. And then we wanna just make sure that we're merging into the base basically, and or sorry, into the main theme here. And then we are pulling from basically the underline theme here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create this pull request. GitHub is gonna automatically check to make sure that there's no conflicting files. So that would be if multiple developers had 
change different things in different files. If you're just working with someone and it's just you, almost always this is going to, this is just gonna say this branch has no conflicts with the base branch and you can go ahead and confirm the merge. And then after a couple minutes, you should see that this theme here will update because this is set to the main. Uh, let's see if it'll just update for us real fast so we can confirm. And you can see that it last saved just now. And if we go into this customizer here, now we can see that there's still this underline here and we can either underline this or not underline this. So that's the video guys. If you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you left a like. If it was helpful to you, I post videos like this Mondays and Wednesdays. So go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.